since the change in enthalpy is equal to the heat transferred at constant pressure with no non-expansion work, then the heat capacity C sub P being equal to the heat transfer divided by the change in temperature is equal to the enthalpy change divided by a change in temperature. Written as a partial differential, this is equal to dH over dT at constant pressure. One thing that hasn't been made explicitly clear yet is that heat capacities change with temperature. For example, the molar heat capacity at constant pressure is typically reported for temperatures around room temperature as A plus B times T plus C over T squared, where A, B, and C are constants fitted for a given substance. At very low temperatures, non-metallic solids are found to have heat capacities that are proportional to T cubed. In one example, it would be equal to G times T cubed, where again, G is fitted. These are just a few examples of how the heat capacity changes as a function of temperature. So here is a simple example, just taking this into account, that the heat capacities do change with temperature. And so in this example, we're looking at um, molecular oxygen and it has a molar heat capacity that varies with temperature um, at constant pressure where it's equal to 25.7 plus 0.013 T. And so what our question here that we're trying to determine is what is the change in enthalpy when 1.46 moles of oxygen is heated from 298 to 367 Kelvin. And so I will of course start with my same place when I talk about heat changes or heat transfers. And in this case, I can write that because my change in enthalpy is equal to the heat transfer at constant pressure. And so in that case, I can then use the same starting place for the integral of Ti to Tf, heat transfer at constant, or sorry, heat capacity at constant pressure times dt. Well, I know that my heat capacity at constant pressure is equal to n times C pm, or the number of moles times the molar heat capacity at constant pressure. And that's the value that I have given to me in the problem. So then I can then write this as delta H is equal to the integral of, and I'll explicitly write in my bounds of my integration, 298 to 367. I have 1.46 moles, and then I have my molar heat capacity at constant pressure, 25.7 plus 0.013 T times dT. Now in this case, I actually have functions of t in my integral. Here my function of t is just equal to 1. Here I've got explicitly a function of t. And so now I need to actually do an explicit integral. When I do this integral, what I'm going to get is 1.46 times 25.7t plus 0.013t squared over 2. And that's evaluated between 367 and 298. At this point, I'm just using the fundamental theorem of calculus and just applying algebra. 1.46 times 25.7 times 367 plus 0 0.013 times 367 squared divided by 2. I'll put this inside square brackets just so I can delineate this a little bit better because I want to make sure I make my minus sign here explicit. 25.7 times 298 plus 0 0.013 times 298 squared divided by 2, close bracket, close big bracket. And so then now I'm just going to evaluate some of these, some of these numbers. 1.46 this first value is 9431.9 plus 875.5 minus 7658.6 plus 577.2. Delta H is equal to 1.46. Now doing the inside of these curly or these rounded brackets, I've got 10, 3, 07.4 minus 8235.8. Now doing explicitly that subtraction, I've got 2071.6. And then finally my delta H, when I multiply that by 1.46 is 3.02 times 
times 10 to the 3 joules. Since there is an intimate relationship between the internal energy and enthalpy, there should be therefore also be a relationship between the heat capacity at constant pressure and constant volume. Let's now figure that out. Since the molar enthalpy equals the molar internal energy plus R times T for ideal gases, then when the temperature changes, the enthalpy and the internal energy also change. Written in terms of differentials, dHm is equal to dUm plus R times dT. Substituting in the dHm is equal to the molar heat capacity at constant pressure times dT, and dUm is equal to the molar heat capacity at constant volume times dT, which is just quantifying the heat transferred at constant pressure and volume respectively, then gives the heat capacity at constant pressure, or rather the molar heat capacity at constant pressure times dT is equal to the molar heat capacity at constant volume times dT plus R times dT. If we divide both sides by dT, then we can rearrange, and what we get is the molar heat capacity at constant pressure minus the molar heat capacity at constant volume is equal to R, the gas constant. So the molar heat capacity of an ideal gas is greater at constant pressure than at constant volume. Remember that as heat capacities grow, so does the energy required to change the temperature by one degree. So at constant volume, no expansion work is possible, and all the heat remains in the system. This means a larger change in temperature is possible for an equivalent amount of heat transferred. That means that at constant pressure, some of the heat then escapes its work, meaning that less energy remains in the system, and this results in a lower temperature increase. So using this information, we can now calculate the change in internal energy and the change in enthalpy by exploiting this relationship between the molar heat capacity at constant volume and constant pressure. And so in this case, we have this example where we're going to calculate the change in internal energy and the change in enthalpy for 55.4 grams of xenon as we heat it from 300 to 400 Kelvin. And we're going to assume ideal gas behavior and that the heat capacities are independent of temperature, just to make this problem simpler. So the first thing is that xenon is a monatomic gas. So that means we can immediately calculate the heat capacity at constant volume as being equal to 3 halves times R. That means that knowing this relationship between the molar heat capacity at constant pressure and the molar heat capacity at constant volume, we can then calculate the molar heat capacity at constant volume, or sorry, at constant pressure, because we'll have rearranging R plus 3 halves over R, and that means that the heat capacity at constant pressure is equal to 5 halves over R. The other piece of information that we will need right away is the number of moles of xenon. And that we can easily find out because we're given the total amount of xenon that we have in the system, or that, that, we're in, that was in the system, and that we can just look up what the molar mass of xenon is, which is 131.293 grams. So then if we take the, the grams of xenon divided by the molar mass of xenon, then we get the moles of xenon, 0.422 moles. So now we can go ahead and calculate the change in internal energy and the change in enthalpy. Starting with the change in internal energy, well that's just equal to the heat transferred at constant volume. And so then we can write then this integral where I'm going to write in the temperature range and we've got the heat capacity at constant volume times dt. We can then substitute in for the heat capacity at constant volume, which is just going to be n times the heat, the molar heat capacity at constant volume which is a number that we already know. We know the number of moles, so we can explicitly solve this integral. Number of moles is 0 0.422. Heat capacity, the molar heat capacity at constant volume, 3 halves R. And then we simply have the integral of dt. So if I evaluate that integral, 0 0.422 times 3 halves r. This integral is just going to be t evaluated between 400 and 300. And so really that's just the difference of 400 and 300. So 
So plugging in all these numbers, delta u is equal to 0 0.422 times 3 over 2 times 8.3145 times 400 minus 300. What that leaves me with is a change in internal energy of 526.3 joules. Let's now do the change in enthalpy, which is the exact same setup, only this time, again, we're looking at the heat transfer to constant pressure, but that integral setup is still pretty much identical. The only difference is that it's the heat capacity at constant pressure times dt. Delta H is equal to, in this case, we have N times C P M D T, meaning the molar or the heat capacity at constant pressure is equal to the number of moles times the molar heat capacity at constant pressure. We know both of those numbers, so then we can substitute in delta H is equal to 0 0.422 times 5 over 2 times R times the integral of between 300 and 400 of dt. Well, that integral, that's just going to be equal to t evaluated between evaluated between 400 and 300. Substituting in all the numbers, 0 0.422 times 5 over 2 times 8.3145 times 400 minus 300, I get a change in enthalpy of 877.2 joules. So what does this result mean? Well here if we look at the change in internal energy, we see we get a value of 526.3 joules. And since we have a constant volume process, so this was calculated as a constant volume process, no expansion work was possible. That means that all the energy then did that's transferred in as heat is then able to raise the temperature. When we look at the change in enthalpy, what we have here is a number that's larger. We have it that is equal to 877.2. Remember, we're talking about the exact same temperature change. We're going from, in both cases, 300 degrees Kelvin to 400 degrees Kelvin. And what that means is that to do that temperature change, it required, in the constant pressure process, it required roughly about 350 more joules of energy to do it. And the reason why is that work is possible here, like PV work is possible. So that means then that as the heat goes in, we also have work going out. That means then that for the if we want to have an equivalent temperature rise, we have to put in more Q since we're losing some of that energy as work.